fine. Ready? I am muted. Thank you, Saint Nobody. This is... I've, t I've said this before. This is the problem with using the same program to stream as I do to occasionally record mm -hmm. gameplay footage for episodes of Accessibility, which is, when I'm recording gameplay footage, I just mute my mic. And I'm chronically, clinically incapable of remembering to unmute my mic when a stream starts. Like, I remember it for podcasts. Podcasts, I always remember to check the, 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 the little light on the mic is on streams i'm always thousand percent confident that like yeah yeah i can i can be heard who's that sujimon you asked uh it's me i'm the 151st sujimon i i am the mythical sujimon for this generation uh artisan says was checking my browser first to say uh, say it yeah no <sighs> I just am incapable of remembering to unmute myself. It. I would rather this than the alternative. I'd. R I. I don't ever want to be the person who thinks my mighty mic is muted and it's not, and I secretly am like, ooh, oh, Twitch, or oh, Twitch chat, Twitch chat, uh, a little smelly today. Oh, don't want to get caught saying that on mic, you know. It, it, I'd rather be an over, over, muter than not. Say, nobody says there's probably a way to schedule a job on your computer to unmute the mic. Yeah, but I don't trust myself. I don't trust... I don't trust a computer to be responsible for the, the muted or not muted status of my microphone. I remember to mute it if I need it muted. I just occasionally will start a stream and get like a minute in and be like, ah, I was muted. Sparkly said that I'm giving an example of a thing I definitely wouldn't say on mic. I definitely wouldn't say that when the mic was muted. Chat, you all smell lovely. You all smell like a fresh field of flowers right now, and... <sighs> ah, good smells. Fuck it, I'm going back in- I'm going back in the dungeon. I'm gonna try and clear this fucking combat dungeon tonight, cause... That's where I'm at. I've been poorly today. My body has not been well. We're gonna go kick- kick some underground Yakuza ass. How are you all doing today, you nice smelling chat who are not smelly at all in any way? <laughs> Phenomenological Cat says, I'm reporting in to say that somehow I spent nearly 14 hours in the Dondoku Island minigame in Like a Dragon. I spent, I think, at least 12 hours in the minigame before I left for the first time. And then I came back and did more of it. But on my, my personal playthrough, I'm pretty sure I did over 12 hours on my first visit. It's it's real easy to do that, isn't it? Let's do it. Hey, K31 Jam, K, K Jam. Is that is that a good pronunciation for your your your, your, your your name in the YouTube chat? If not, let me know and I will try and remember. I never know how to pronounce numbers in, in usernames. Saint Nobody says I might just be a tad smelly to be honest. I'm not. I just I literally like 10 minutes before we recorded. I got out of the bath. I had a nice bath and some, some lovely bubble bath and some, some mint and tea tree uh, shower gel was involved. And now I am here. Hopefully smelling alright. Uh... Now, when I get down to this, am I getting at least 500,000 yen per room I clear? Because if so, I can probably justify using the pound maids a bunch. Follow my lead. Let's do the maths. 500k, 400k, okay. We're, we're almost making enough money per match to use one pound mate per match. We won't be gaining cash, but we would be gaining uh, experience pretty quickly. So that's good maths. 
Say Nobody says, so if Twitch chat is smelly is something you would never say on mic, can we infer from context that you would say YouTube chat is smelly? I wouldn't, I wouldn't say that YouTube chat was smelly. I wouldn't say either chat was smelly on mic. I wouldn't do it on mic. Uh, Kian, cool. Um, I will do my best to remember. But yes, honestly, by the time we finish clearing this dungeon, I sh this, this party of characters that we've got here should be a high enough level to clear the end of the game. Um, I shouldn't really need to think about leveling them up at all beyond this point. I might want to get some money to um, get their good weapons. But I can do that off stream. This is probably the last last big batch of, of level grinding we're going to be doing. Yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna do the 500k pound mate for a couple of rooms just, just to get a sense of the income level and wh whether it is solidly at 400k. Yeah, how is everyone doing today? Um, I, what did I do today? I published an accessibility episode. It was a little recap of stuff from earlier this month, and that was good. I spent some of my days subtitling a 35-minute like conversation video that's going up next week that required me to just sit and do transcribing, which is the my brain doesn't focus on that well. Um, did a whole bunch of emails for this year's Access Ability Summer Showcase, um, which I believe at present there are 15 games currently locked in for. Um, I, b I believe we're up to 15, which is the number we had last year, but it's looking like that still has time to grow and might m we might have a few more games than last year, which would be nice. Um, oh, what else have I been up to today? I went to the cinema this morning because I had the option to. I went and saw um, that Godzilla, Godzilla X Kong. I don't know if you're supposed to pronounce the X, but Godzilla Kong feels wrong. Uh, uh, the, the, right, the the New Empire? Is that is that the subtitle of it? I saw the one where Godzilla and Kong team up that came out today. And it... You're right there, Namba. <laughs> it, it sure was a film that happened. I don't know why they called it Godzilla X Kong. There's like seven other things that should be in that title. Are Godzilla and Kong getting shipped? I mean, kinda. They've got a little bit of a Sundari thing going on, but like by by the end of it, I I could believe the two of them would like would smooch in a sequel to this. Yeah, I I know it's X's in sort of and, but I know in like I get told off about this about anime all the time. You're not supposed to say the X in anime titles. Um, like, uh, Spy X Family, it's not Spy X Family, it's Spy Family. Hunter X Hunter, you don't say the X, it's it's Hunter Hunter. I don't know if Godzilla X Kong is meant to be the same. The rules are confusing, I don't follow them well. But, uh, yes, I, I saw... The best, without spoilers, the best way I can I can describe that Godzilla and Kong film is, it, it's the most a movie has ever felt like a roller coaster. Not not in, not in like a my my seat is rumbling. You know, I saw Doom Two, my seat rumbled. You know that felt vaguely roller coasterish. I mean more in the sense of like, you know when you go on a roller coaster with like really good theming. Where they've made like a lot of effort to like set up a whole little world that you experience while you're in the queue. And the narrative like isn't all that deep. But it's all in service of we're about to have some cool set pieces. And we're going to like quickly move you through some elaborate scene setting so that big dramatic thing can happen. It's that. It's the feeling of going through a queue for a roller coaster that is explicitly telling you the plot so that you can then go on on the roller coaster that for some reason needed a plot. XBB, we're still going with this game. We'll be done. We'll we'll finish this game eventually, but I've started and now I must finish because that is that is how it goes. Oh man ran away. I didn't get any fucking points for fighting him. God damn him. Uh, Phenomenological Cat says, I saw someone describe that new Godzilla slash Kong film as a so-so professional wrestling match. Honestly, I had that thought too. There is a point 
I don't think this is a big spoiler to say. There's a point where King Kong does a uh, German suplex on Godzilla. Uh, he does a backbreaker on Godzilla at one point, but like instead of his knee, it's a pyramid. Like it, it, there are points in this where it does really feel like, like an elaborate wrestling film. It does feel like you took these two action figures and made them do a wrestling match at places. That's a good. I noted that I'd seen some wrestling moves. I hadn't made the leap of going, "Ha, huh, yeah, this is kind of just wrestling." Um. Yeah, it's it's a weird one. It's not a bad film, but it's a film that um. It sure does go a thousand miles a minute trying to establish way, way too, way too many things. Like, I think it would be, like, I, I, I will stick to mainly stuff that is in the trailer. It is, instead of being Godzilla vs. Kong, it's, God, it's Godzilla x Kong x evil spinal cord whip wielding Kong x Diddy Kong X a uh, uh, Godzilla kind of thing. X another one of the big monster titans that you've heard of. It's it's a lot of things. They try and wedge a lot of stuff in. It does feel like there is a point where it's like, are we watching like a, a Donkey Kong spin-off film? And this is about Donkey Kong and Diddy Kong and Cranky Kong. Is like a vibe that happens for a while, but like really cranky, Cranky Kong, Cr cranky enough to. You know, like, sever a limb with a spinal cord whip. Be real cr cranky. Sparky, Sparkly Synth says, Kaiju Polycule is one heck of a band name. I'm going to keep that on standby. I've never... There's a game I've never streamed, but I played it at a recent art exhibition to do with uh, cuteness that happened in London, which, before I start, fuck that exhibition opening with an AI art exhibit. It was fucking bullshit. But, um... Uh, what is it called? It's a kaiju dating sim. Kaiju? I think it's called Kaiju because it's like, um, no, uh, let me, kaiju dating sim. What is it? Yeah, Kaiju, the kaiju dating sim. Uh, you play a big pink love struck Godzilla type creature stomping around the world, destroying landmarks, trying to date other cute, uh, monsters. I tried to go on a lesbian date with uh, Mothra, which is Mothra, but made of moss. Um, and it was really cute. It was genuinely, like, very sweet queer rap in the form of, can I make Godzilla and Mothra, but, but Mothra's made of moss. Do a kiss. It is, it is a good game, and oh, I, need a, I need to talk about it in some professional capacity. I... I it is on my list of things I want to, like, give proper time so I can give it, like, a good Pogquisition chat, probably do it on the stream. Um, Phenomenal Logical Cat says, I'm endlessly fascinated how both Shin Godzilla and Godzilla Minus One can exist in the same short space of time as Godzilla x Kong The New Empire. Yes, I was thinking this when I saw it. It's... Both of them were enjoyable films, but they were such different fucking things that coexist, like, mere months apart. Because, like... Godzilla Minus One, if you've not seen it, is barely a Godzilla film. Like, Godzilla's there, and Godzilla, like, happens in the plot. But, like, it is fundamentally a film about, like, uh, PTSD post-war, uh, specifically, like, post-World War II PTSD and survivor's guilt and the ways that we... Um, that it can be really, really fucking unhealthy to uh, deliberately ascribe survivor's guilt to uh, survivors of war. And the ways that, like, uh, uh, kamikaze bombing mentality meant that, dis uh, you know, uh, being a survivor was dishonorable in a way that really sort of honed in on, on survivor's guilt in a really specifically horrible way. And then this one is like, hey, what if Godzilla sucked up every bit of radiation on the planet and Kong got a robot hand? And those, those happen, like, three months apart. <laughs> And I think they're both great in incomparable ways. Hey, Bella Bean, thank you very much for the 15 months of sub. Thank you. How are you doing? Yeah, it's... Godzilla Minus One is, is a fantastic war film that uses Godzilla functionally to make it, like, as a, as a plot driver, whereas... 
Godzilla X Kong really, really just is. Do do you want to see cool big monsters fight? Because cool big monsters are cool. Watch them fight in that cool. And both of them feel suitably like they have space to exist. Didn't mean to use that one, but that's fine. Um, it'll still work. I, Bella Bean, there are there are worse problems to have than finding a really good mortgage opportunity. Oh oh no, you found a really good deal on uh, a stable housing situation. Hell yeah, I get it though. Not being able to travel for a while, that suck. I, I I wish you well, weathering that. Uh yeah, I can't think of many franchises or like uh, media properties where you get such disparate releases, like such tonally different things using the same property. Oh, what? Oh, you wanted to move abroad for a year? Oh, tra travel abroad. Oh, sorry, I thought you meant for a year you won't be able to travel abroad. It, like, I, I see what you mean. Ah. Now I can't, can't ever in your life. Well, never say never. You know, you you never know what life will what life will deal out to you. Uh, I I I I'm sorry that that one cool good opportunity is erasing another, and hopefully life finds a way. Huh. Could have sworn I saw something just now. Oh hey, people in a cage. Can I let, let you out of? I let you all out of the cages? No, apparently not. Are you... Are you pissing against the wall, sir? I'll, I'll leave you to it. Maybe I'll get to join the Yakuza and move to Hawaii. Yeah, maybe you'll find out you have a secret Hawaiian relative that you have to go save from all of the, the, the crime factions. Does that seem likely? Have you ever... Have, has it ever been hinted to you you might have secret... Hawaiian crime relatives. Because if you've ever, if that's ever been like hinted at, then maybe, maybe it'll work out. Uh, where, how do I, how do I target the Mr. Six? But not the logical cat. No, none of those people seem, like right in this room, I'm rescuing a person who's trapped. So like Kiri is clearly going, hey, do you need help? No, you're having fun pissing against the wall? Cool, okay. Oh, come on. Everyone, everyone wake up so that Kiryu can do a pound mate summon and fix all this. Okay, Kiryu. Why is this here now? Surely this was... Has my pound mate's menu gotten wider? I swear that the pincer one used to be on the right hand spot. It used to be all the way on the side. Maybe I'm wrong? Oh hey Zilla, thank you very much for the bits. Uh, how, how you doing? Um, yes, pound mates indeed. Uh, this... They're, 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 they're your mates and they're gonna pound the hell out of people. What else could pound mates mean? Yeah, you know what I was weirdly surprised by today? How many like parents had bought who had bought their brought their very 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 young children to see Godzilla? Um, and I get that like it's a bank holiday here in the UK. It's it's Good Friday, but there there were like the front row of my cinema had like a dad with like three children, the oldest of whom I think must have been like six or seven. Like, one of them, I swear, was, like, three years old. And it's like, yeah, come watch a two-hour movie where a hell of a lot of, thing of like, animals are gonna... Like, animal-looking things are gonna get hurt. And there's gonna be, like, big, loud noises. But, like, that was not an outlier. There were so many just people who were like, yeah, this is a good, good, this is a good choice of film for taking out my three- and four-year-old, too. 
It's not childhood if you don't get traumatized by films you shouldn't be watching. Yeah, but like, usually you do that at home. Is that not the way? Usually it's like a, a DVD or VHS rental from like your blockbuster equivalent. That you put you put on a film that they really shouldn't be watching and like they soak it in. You don't go to the cinema to see like the weird, like weirdly not for them film. And, Cause you know why it's weird? I, I was thinking about this at the time. A new Kung Fu Panda movie came out today. And I was sat there in Godzilla going, all of these three and four year olds would probably rather be watching Kung Fu Panda, I imagine. That seems like a far more sensible thing to take your gaggle of small children to. Like, it really felt like a room full of specifically mid 40s dads who were like, I gotta take my kids to do something on, on the bank holiday. I don't wanna see Kung Fu Panda though. Fuck it, we're going to Godzilla. We and I respect moment. that. I respect... I respect the hustle. Even if I I question some of their, their choices. I assume they saw the better film, but... Uh, Phenomenal Logical Cat says, I saw very young children going to the cinema to see Doom 2 a little while ago. I mean... That, that's, at least with Godzilla, it's I'm watching the big the big flashing lights and I know which one's the hero and the villain and who I'm supposed to root for. Doom 2, like, do, do you explain to your very young child, like, you try and explain to them, like, oh, oh yeah, well, you know, here's how we explain to you that um, uh, these people up on this planet propped up a fake religion in order to create a fake prophecy that they could later capitalize on in order to colonize... Uh, the planet without, you know, any pushback under a false messiah narrative. Like, how do you... Like, what does, what does like, a very young child get out of Doom 2? Worm God. Worm Big. Don't drink the blue juice. Also, while we're here, can I just say, um... I... I... I know it makes no logical sense, but I have a thought about Doom 2 that I can't unthink, which is it makes more sense if, uh... God, what's the really bland name of the main character? Paul. Doom 2 makes more sense if Paul is a trans woman who hadn't come out yet. Because, uh, I mean, look, there's, a, there's literally only one bit of evidence for it. Paul drinks the, the blue goo that's meant to kill you if you're, a, if, if you're not a woman. And he survives the blue goo. Therefore, trans woman Paul. That, there is the end of my lecture. Oh, I don't know if I've talked about this on on stream uh, on this stream here yet, but um, I I got a I I wrote a thing recently that was on the BAFTA website that went up yesterday. Um, BAFTA announced that they're doing uh their their BAFTA game special award for this year is going to the uh the the charity uh, special is going to uh, their special award this year is going to the charity special effect, which does wonderful work for uh, accessibility and. Uh, they asked. They let me know a little early that who was winning the award, and asked me to on the sly write a little article to talk about you know 15 years of that charity and why the work they do in accessibility is important. And uh, I on the quiet was finding accessibility uh, people who'd used the charity and who the charity had been able to help to interview and get quotes from, despite the charity not yet knowing they'd won. Uh, one of whom was the lovely Dana Lion. You'll know from our chat. Uh, Dana Lion is is in that 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 article. Um, now, Daria Morgan, thank you very much for the 20 months of sub. Thank you. Yes, I'm going to pop a link in the chat to it. But yeah, those of you that, that, that know Dandelion from the chat here, um, Dandelion's in the piece, which was really cool. It was really nice to, to yeah. be able to, to, to get them in there. Okay. Uh, right. Welcome, Raiders. Hi, everyone who's just come over from Comrade's uh, stream, which I believe is an art stream today, if I saw it right. How you doing, Raiders? We are still fighting our way through Yakuza. Or just having a nice little chill chat stream, because I'm ill today. I've had an upset stomach all day. I've not been doing well. So we're doing some, some melee combat that's not going to require too much of my brain. Look, the only reason I've not, like, gone really elaborate on trying to make Paul, Paul from Doom 2 as a trans woman a theory 
is look, as a trans woman, I don't want to be, I don't want to be claiming Dune, uh, uh Paul. Paul. Paul's not someone that, like, I, I'm not going to make that fight, because I'm like, I, I, I don't want to fight to get the, uh, the, the figurehead of a holy war, uh, potentially figurehead of, of, uh, colonization effort, etc., uh, who was sort of, uh, abandoned his promises to a people. Not necessarily someone that I'm like, yeah, yeah, let's make, let's, let's fight tooth and nail to argue that's, that's, that's one of ours. <laughs> you don't want to claim Space Hitler. Um, yeah, you know, sometimes, look, sometimes there's a character that's very beloved and I will make the effort to do a, uh, this character is definitely trans, I swear it, you know, effort for, but I'm not making the effort for Paul. Oh, a painting miniature stream, lovely. Oh, um, Twitch streams should be shifting back to their regular time uh, for US people, um, because I've been streaming regular time UK, which will be, what was it, one hour later than usual US for the last, like, three weeks. UK clocks finally changed this weekend, so everything will line back up to how it's supposed to be next week. Allow me. Yeah, yeah, Phenomenological Cat, I've heard that there's more potential transcoding later on in, in the Dune stuff, but again, I'm not going to fight to have Hit space Worm Hitler on the team. Also, I wasn't paying attention. When when did a big stone tanuki end up in this room? Okay, let's go this way. Hey, Dice Goddess. How are you? Okay, we've nearly played this out. Number. Finish the Death Knuckle. Still recovering from GDC, I imagine. GDC sounds like a l always sounds like a lot every year. Oh, I should have uh, I should have swapped to the mode that would break block. Uh Kiryu, that's the main thing you're really good for. Let's finish it. Together. We only need one shot. I think this yeah, I think that ignores guard. Yeah, it does. Xiao is no longer drunk. Xiao, can you... Yeah, you can finish this off, probably. Follow my lead. Terra says, Looking forward to the return of Wet Team in Dice Funk. Can't wait for the return of Jock, Nerd, and Emo. Oh, I don't remember... Um, I'm trying to remember where Wet Team is up to in Dice Funk, because obviously we record multiple episodes a week, so we're a little ahead of things. Um... What was the most recent Dry Team arc that's just finished in, in Dice Funk? That'll help me know where we're at. Uh, items is probably a good healing item in here somewhere, yeah. That'll do. Okay, so if I loop around this way... Uh, that Dario Morgan says, I'm so far behind, I've just finished season 8 of Dice Funk. Um, light and no non spoiler uh, tease for where we're at recording in season 10 of Dice Funk right now. Barbella finally wrote her first actually good, competent riddle in whatever episode just got recorded. Barbella has one vaguely competent ri riddle she's written all season, and it just happened. Uh, just finished the capitalist that jumped the line. Okay, yes, yes, the um, the the one that uh, a certain party member uh, made made some promises to. What was Wet Team doing at that time? Oh, I think Wet Team is about to go on a quest. Wet Team hasn't yet gone on a specific mission to go like the let's go put a body part in a thing. Arc. That hasn't happened yet, has it? We haven't had the here's a body part, go go drop it in the hole arc. Or was that the first arc? No. That's the, that is the second arc. 
Yeah, you're 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 oh you're about to get so you're about to get so much riddle fish snake serpent lore this upcoming arc. This is where we really start getting into I I would say next wet arc. If if there is an if there is a a season ten arc that feels like it's Barbella's story arc, it's the next wet arc we're getting. Yeah, they just met someone from Barbella's religion. Yes, um, I know it's not what he's meant to be, but I, I in my head he's he's the 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 the, the riddle bishop or the the riddle pope. I think I call him the riddle bishop a lot because I always forget his name. I call him the riddle bishop. Um. Yeah, no, you are about to get, like, the Barbella arc, and I hope you're ready. I, I'm i really happy with it. Bishop Bitter Creek. Bishop Bitter Creek, that's the name. I am capable of remembering it sometimes. Yeah, the, 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 the Riddle Pope. Sometimes you just got to check in with the Riddle Pope. Stop headbutting me, fools! Are we making more than 500k per fight now? Because if so, I can probably start doing pound mates more. There's no way to fight. Let's let's finish this one without pound mates at least. We'll we'll see where we're at money wise. I feel so heavy. I really need to heal everyone up. We need we need healing soon. This is the main reason why I need to start doing the pound mates. I need to I need to be better conserving my resources and. Spending cash is a good way to avoid using up every other resource. There we go. Over 500, uh, still 400k. Uh, I can still justify using it most most rounds, I think. Huh. I think I see something. Done with that floor. Where are we on? Twenty twenty two. Hey, a cat made entirely out of urine. How how do? Got messages pinging. Are any of these important? Uh, oh, those can wait. Uh, Ugh, there we go. Run, run, run as fast as you can. Except not, not that fast because Kiryu's got cancer. We don't want to. We don't want to overtax his body. Run, run, fun. Uh, run, run, run. A reasonable amount of the speed that you can. Let's do it. Yeah, fuck it. We're bringing out the pound, mates. It's no begging for mercy now. What's the hold up? It's time to start just getting some rooms cleared until we get that couple of levels we need. Okay, we are VIP in the pound mates now, which is good. Yeah, one of those will almost clear a room by itself. We can get to the point where we're still making a financial income. Oh, Kiryu's health is real bad. I probably need to actually use a turn healing Kiryu. We might lose this dungeon run. Oh, yeah, you're gonna... Okay, you're, you're, you're healing. That's fine. That's better. Uh... Only with a good heal. What's the hold up? Yeah, heal Kiryu, because if Kiryu passes out, everything is over. Burn everyone. There's more where 
from. Hurrah! Everyone will be defeated. Oh, treasure ahoy! Where, where is oh there's the treasure. More of these mysterious rooms full of cages. And again. I was gonna say Kiryu's not letting anyone out, but this man like actively seems to be like if it weren't for us being 23 floors down, I would think this man was, like, in, in the cage at a club, like, you know, dancing in a little box. I'm going to assume these people are fine to be here. They've not expressed that they want me to break them out, so leave it, we'll leave them be. I am sure they're fine. Ooh, we talked about this in chat a couple of weeks ago. Do you remember um, we talked in chat about um, a bunch of indie devs behind, like, successful, well-known um, vampire survivors y roguelike-y kind of games were all doing something together that was, like, the triple I initiative? Uh, we know what that is now. Um, there is a 45-minute... Um, indie game focused um, like games presentation that is happening. Uh, 45 minutes. It's airing on 10th of April. Uh, so that's like a week and a half coming up from two weeks away. Um, major announcements and reveals from uh, Slay the Spires devs, the Darkest Dungeon devs, Terraria's developers, uh, the Dead Cells devs, um, uh, it will be a straight to the point show packed with announcements as a collective of studios. No hosting segments, no advertisements, no sponsorships, no extra fluff, just games. Um, yeah, and that's on April 10th. So it's a big, hey, all these indies are coming together to just do an indie direct of their own. Oh my god, you... I don't think it's going to be the case. But it would be really fucking funny. Here we go. If uh, we finally got like an update on um, Hollow Knight Silk Song, and it wasn't in the PlayStation Direct or the Xbox Direct or the Nintendo Direct that everyone has routinely been going, it's got to be this one, 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 and it just pops up in the indie in the indie showcase, like the indies doing their own indie showcase ends with like Hollow Knight Silk Song popping back up. I would genuinely love it. I, I, I kind of want it to happen. I, th I think any developer with a sense of humor would go for that plan. Let's go. Oh, you are strong, Forsaken Samurai. Let's do the ladder attack. I love watching this man just fuck around with his ladder. Oh, I'm not sure any messages coming through. They can wait. I'm hoping this weekend will be the weekend I finally finish uh, Final Fantasy VII Rebirth. Me and Jane have been clocking away at it. We've got to be near the end. I swear, we've got to be near the end. But last time I said that, like, I, I said we said that last weekend, and then we we got to the bit where there was like a 40-minute playable opera. And as such, I will never pretend to understand exactly how much game that game's gonna have ha ha have it in it. Okay. Let's do it. Oh, Terra, you mean in Final Fantasy VII Rebirth, sorry. You sent a message that just said, I, ha I just had the plane crash. And I spent a solid 30 seconds trying to go, is this, a, is this like, did some 
Like, is this something to do with a real world event? Like, what the fuck is. I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, no, I. So many things have happened in that game, I forget things that have happened in that game. No, no, your, your message was totally reasonable and made sense. I just did the thing where my brain goes, that could be a real world event, don't be insensitive, rack your brain. <laughs> Yeah, no, that's fair. Um, Time to shut it down. <laughs> yes. Uh, you're maybe like a weekend of playing behind where I'm at. Like, me and Jane are maybe a weekend ahead of that in terms of play playtime. If I remember right. <laughs> we should relish this moment. I keep thinking, I keep thinking, it's gotta, we gotta be there now, we gotta be there now. There's just so much game in that game. It, it's got moments like in this where Kiryu came back to Japan and suddenly the narrative split in two. It's got moments like that of, yes, I have a firm sense of where I'm at in Final Fantasy. Okay. Okay, you're just gonna add that in, are you? Cool. I've got some more fight in me. Uh, right. Still at least one more way to go. Yeah, all the places just got more quests. Yeah, that that's the point we were at, where we thought we thought we'd we were like right ready to finish the game, and it goes, hey, you know how you 100 percented every area as best you could before you moved on from them? Every single area has new quests. And so we were like, ah. I think the only side quest I haven't 100 percented and that we kind of were like, okay, we can just leave it here. It was like the final two chocobo races there's like two more races left and it's like i'm just not good enough to to win these last couple of chocobo races and i'm not gonna hold up finishing the game over it at this point because we want to finish the game you know a not you know it's still unspoiled on the ending of that which is you know i don't know how much or little it's changed from the original or whatever but equally we like playing a lot of board games, and we've really not had board game time the last few, uh, like, over a month now, because our weekends have been cool, we've got more Final Fantasy to do. So it'll be nice to have weekends open again to be like, you might get up on a Saturday morning and go, what you in the mood for? Rather than being like, we know what we're doing today, it's Final Fantasy. And as great as Final Fantasy is, you know, it, it's nice to... It's, no, it's nice to have some variety in the weekend activities. Well, like, Terra, here's the thing. You're not wrong that that happens in the original, but also... It... How much... How much is being kept for the sequel versus how much is going to appear in this game is, like, a big open question mark. Oh, wake up, Kiryu. I need you to l let the, the lesbian lobsters free. Mr. Six, stop making everyone be asleep. Yeah, me and Jane still haven't... Like, there's still one of the proto-relic quests that, like, we did half of, and then a guy was like, come back, I'll, I'll call you, come back later. Don't know when we're finishing that. <laughs> Hey, Dandelion uh, says, hey, y'all, uh, what have I missed? I was talking to Izzy because she's abandoning me to go on a cruise to parts of Europe tomorrow. Izzy's just jetting off all over the fucking world at the moment, huh? Um, what have you missed? Uh, we're fighting our way through one more bit of dungeon because I've been poorly today. I've had an upset stomach and I was just like, I'm in the mood for some mindless RPG button mashing because I'm, I'm tired. I'm fatigued. <sighs> Being unwell has tired me, but we're having a good time. Uh, we did talk about the fact that, hey, we talked earlier about that, that BAFTA article. What you, Dandelion, are in. Uh, linked it in the chat. Hey, everyone tell Dandelion how cool that, that article was that, that they got words in. Um, that's how we're doing. Okay, come on, Kiryu, wake up. Oh, 
You, Kiryu, you are my whole, like, battle strat. No way to fight. Okay, stamp while you're asleep. There we go. Done. Have we cleared out the whole floor? We have. But yes, I was joking to, to Dandelion about this at the time when I was like, hey, do you want to contribute to this BAFTA thing? Um, someone from our Twitch chat, Dandelion, finally got to be in on one of the Laura's working on a secret project during stream. Ooh, Laura's got secret projects in the work. Wonder what they are. Dandelion knew what one of them was. I was like, oh, working, working on a secret project. Mm, wonder, mm, oh, what, what, whatever could I be working on? Hint, hint, wink, wink. You know. That was fun. It's been nice having one of the one of the secret projects was one that someone in chat could be like, I know what the secret project is. Ha ha. And that's the end of it. <laughs> it's nice to be able to do secret project where I can actually share it with someone. Usually, it's just me alone in a room doing the thing. It's nice when I can be like. Do you want to come be part of the secret? <laughs> right, we're nearly at the point where we're going to get rewards. Uh, oh. oh, I need to see what other films are coming out soon. The joys of this stupid unlimited, uh, this unlimited cinema thing that I've got. I... It's making me actually pay attention to new release films in a way that I haven't done in years. I am now a regular person of like, what what are the films? What films occur? Ooh, Jogan Jonin Vest of the Eager Ryu. My Rainbow Crystal. Ah, I'm stuck. And alone says, I also now know why Izzy occasionally spills me secrets. Keeping them is hard. I I have the the luck that um because Jane edits accessibility, um most of the t most of the time it is it is under like you know I'll get in at see a game under NDA and be able to show Jane because I'm like Jane's gonna be editing the video for work anyway. Jane, uh, you know that is that is under the embargo agreement. Someone's gonna be editing the video. That's fine. They have permission to see the footage and whatever, um, as long as they stick to my embargo stuff. But it means that like often I'll have to have like a game that I can't tell anyone about that I'm playing. But I can at least be like, oh yeah, Jane, here's how it's going. You know, occasionally there will be. Thing, work projects where I will be told like you can't tell anyone like not even like uh, your partner and that's that's a weird one when it's like I'm gonna go sit in the office and do a thing can't tell you about it probably gonna be good or bad I don't know Yeah, Jane usually knows most of, most of my secret stuff I don't work. We are we are sort of a work unit. Is this Chrono Trigger, says Terra? I mean no way to fight. every video game, every RPG is basically Chrono Trigger. They're all they're all the same thing. They made one RPG. It's Chrono Trigger. <laughs> How are we doing? I'm gonna clear up. Okay. Oh, I'm in first. Ah, uh, I always forget how to get out of first person. <gasps> There's an item behind the safe. Sneaky little safe. Well, go me jewel research data. <laughs> Izzy says you're not meant to tell people I accidentally tell you things, Danny. Um, in, Danny never said what 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 you 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 accidentally tell. It could be, oh, here's what I had for breakfast. Oops, I was meant to. Oh, I was meant to keep that a secret. <laughs> 
No one ever knows anything. It's all... No one's ever heard a secret ever in their lives. I'm genuinely curious because I have no... Like, I, I've realized I don't know the answer to this. Dandelion, did you did you tell Izzy that, about the, the BAFTA thing? Cause like I'd have been totally fine if you did. I I I trust Izzy to not uh, not say anything. But I'm realizing I don't know if I explicitly like told you that would be fine. I don't know if you told Izzy, and I'm now super curious if Izzy knew. I knew about the BAFTA. Didn't see the article till after the announcement. That's fair. That's about what I I I, ex I expected. About as much. <laughs> yeah, you're you're both on the list of. I I trust that you're not gonna like get get my relationship with Bafta room. Like I I trust you both. Oh. Oh, Kiri. Oh, yeah. I just realized I. That, that was real bad. I realized Kiryu was on low health and I just didn't register it. Well, uh, well, that's embarrassing. That's embarrassing to have failed what should have been a fairly easy run cause just because I forgot to heal up between missions. Um, uh, right. <sighs> The only reason I'm tempted to jump back into the dungeon right now is I know I'll forget to do this dungeon if I don't do it now. If I leave and do other things, there's so many things in this video game I will forget to come back to the dungeon. How long have we been streaming so far? Like an hour. I don't have the switch up here. If I had the switch up here, I'd be tempted to swap the stream something else, like just for a bit. What do I have, what do I have installed right now that we can do? Ah, uh, fuck it. I jump back in. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do it. It's it's the kind of day I'm having. I will forget to do it if I don't do it. I'm gonna I'm gonna follow the AD, the ADHD wherever it shall lead. Oh, so many emails. So many emails. Go away, emails. Okay, time to time to speed run the dungeon. Um, I won't tell me how many people I've saved on this dungeon run. It's my turn. Okay, I am definitely overusing the pound mates this time. I'm I'm gonna speed run through the dungeon via the medium of pound mates. I have 58 million, it'll be fine. Ah, uh, see, Dandelion, I had the exact opposite situation today. Um, I got to tell my family that I'd written the stuff for BAFTA, and it's one of the few times I've ever talked about a video game thing where my family members were like, Oh, I've heard of, I've heard of BAFTA. BAFTA's a big deal. Oh, your writing, your writing's like a big deal, is it? <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I wrote, I, I, I wrote for a thing you've heard of. It's about the same response as they gave when I wrote for The Guardian and did that Peter Molyneux interview that was like top trending on Facebook news for a bit. Occasionally I'll I'll talk about video games somewhere that my parents have heard of and they'll be like, oh, oh, it's like a real job, isn't it? Usually it, The Guardian, BAFTA now, and uh, when I used to do stuff on the BBC, the BBC my parents always thought was, was exciting. Oh, that was the other thing I did today. I spent like an hour explaining Fortnite to my to my older sister today. Um, I have an older sister. She has kids. One of her kids is uh, young. Uh, I'll say I'll say under ten. Uh, wants to play Fortnite because because all all the friends are playing Fortnite, and she was like, I 
I know he's got guns in it, and as such, I, I, I'm not, I've been holding off on letting him play. What, what's Fortnite, and what can I do parental controls-wise to make it safe? And what do I need to know about, about it being safe? So I spent like an hour this morning explaining to my tech illiterate video game uh, not aware sister everything there was to know about Fortnite. I've not had the Roblox talk with her yet because her, her kid has no interest in Roblox. Fortnite is like for her kid the one the one video game all, all the kids are sort of pressuring. Um, which, you know what the weirdest bit of having the Fortnite conversation was? It was none of the stuff to do with, like, you know, explaining the battle pass and, like, uh, predatory monetization and, like, how the battle pass might lead to compulsive playing habits or, you know, how to control voice chat or, you know, uh, it wasn't anything to do with, like, the peer pressure that exists around, like, not being a default with a default skin. The thing I had to explain to my sister was that Fortnite isn't just a shooting game. That's probably what, what your kid's gonna play. But it's also like a bunch of other things now, one of which is a music rhythm game. And I had to have the conversation with her that uh, the music rhythm section doesn't have parental controls on it, which is interesting because the music rhythm mode in Fortnite contains Disturbed's Down With The Sickness, which if you know that song, has a bridge in which the singer pretends to be a young boy uh, begging his mother not to not to uh, abuse him. Uh, pl please, mommy, please don't. Please, I'll be a good boy, etc. Uh, getting more and more distressed sounding. And that's just in the song in Fortnite. They put that song in Fortnite with that in there without, like, you know, parental controls stopping it. They took out the bit where the singer calls his mother a fucking bitch. But the... the uh, there's a bit that's like, uh, why won't you just fuck off, gets sung over and over, and they make the word fuck quieter, but it's still clearly there. Like, they took out fucking bitch entirely, but get the fuck out. It's just get the fuck out. <laughs> yeah, so I, I... That was a conversation where I had to be like, I don't think your kid is, like, gonna be extensively into the music rhythm mode, but it's there. Let's have the disturbed down with the sickness domestic abuse, uh breakdown to music conversation um but yeah my my summary was like hey i i tried to go like real real basics i was like matches are like 20 minutes long uh the the match length is pretty consistent because there's a big circle closing in that will eventually you know reach the center so like you know there'll be a set length you can't pause you can't really pause or like quit mid game so like if you've told him he can play one more game, it might be up to 20 minutes before he can reasonably stop and, like, tempting to stop him before that's probably gonna cause arguments. Um, you know, I had the conversation about, like, battle passes expire after a certain amount of time, and if your kid's at, like, level 38 out of 40 and there's a cool outfit at level 40 and the battle pass expires tomorrow, you might get some, some tantrums over, I need to play Fortnite for the next eight hours to get that outfit, or I ne can never get that outfit. Like, I... I think I did a decent job explaining, like, what Fortnite is and, you know, what, what, not saying, you know, you shouldn't let the kid play Fortnite, but, like, these are the things you need to be aware of about video games these days. Ugh. Yeah, I did vaguely mention Roblox. I was like, in future, if, if if a game called Roblox comes up, I'm telling you now, like, reach back out to me and, like, we'll have a conversation about that one. It's another popular kids game. If it comes up, I'll run you through it. Yes, I, I did get to crack out my uh, explaining to parents what video games are muscles, which I haven't done for a while. Going back into the lore of vault of, like, games industry jobs Laura's had at various points. Back in the day, before Podquisition, I briefly uh, used to make YouTube videos for a channel called Family Gamer TV, which uh, it's sort of been replaced now by something called Family Gaming Database, which uh, is a really good resource for like people listing the accessibility stuff in their games. But it used to be a YouTube channel that was like reviews of video games and like review the video game, but also how how appropriate is is it for children of various age groups. 
That was a thing I did for a while. I, I, I imagine they're still out there. YouTube videos of me doing family friendliness YouTube reviews of, of largely like indie games. Um, that was God. I've I've written for a lot of places all over the place over the years in in my time. I'm gonna see if I can find one of those old reviews because. God, my voice probably. I, what do I even say? When when was that? When would that have been? Family Gamer TV. What was that game called? Um, is the game called like Spoiler Alert? Yeah, Two Minute In. Oh, I did a series called Two Minute Indies. I did two minute reviews of indie games, specifically for a family gaming YouTube channel reviewing. Is this indie game family friendly? This was. Yeah, this was like a decade ago. Um, huh. You know what? Fuck it. It's two minutes long. I'm okay. It's three minutes long. My two minute review is three minutes long. That's a that's a great start. Um, I'm just really curious about this, so I'm gonna go dig up one of my old one of my old reviews from like a decade ago. I don't remember what, what else I to... even reviewed for them. I remember spoiler alert. I remember that game. Hello, and welcome to Family Gamer TV's Two Minute Indies. Oh my, oh my god. You you know that this is old, because this is in the Laura wears a scarf every day because hilariously pointy Adam's apple before it got, like, tracheal shaved down. This is in that era. This is in the pub flat. And I am... You can hear the amount of I need to get my... You can hear this is in the Laura era of I have to get my voice as high as physically possible. You know how old this is? This is before I started dyeing my hair fancy colours. This is brown hair Laura. My name's Laura. I write for a website called IndieHaven.com. I sound like I've done fucking helium. And I love experimental small video games, which is why I love indies. Indie games are small games made by even smaller teams that focus on experimental God, new ideas God, instead of big voice. budget production values. Indie games are great for families, because for the price of one AAA boxed release, you and your family can try out a whole host of different, smaller, cheaper experiences and see which ones are right for you. Oh, I had Henry VIII tits. I did have that much going for me. I'm here today to Mac, Linux and Android phones, but not on iOS devices like your iPhone and iPad. God, yeah, I had to explain what an iOS device was. God, yeah, this was a this was a blast from the past. Dandelion says you don't sound like the same person, more BBC than now. Yeah, it it was a look. It was an era where there were there were very few trans people in the games industry uh, a decade ago that I could look to for like solidarity. Um, and those that did exist, there were very few who sounded like I did. Um, there was very little in the way of like person in the games industry who has a voice like mine and is a trans woman. It was a fucking scary time to be trying to make stuff in the industry. I was, there was a lot going on and I was doing my best. The game currently costs £1.99. Spoiler alert starts on the last level of an adventure, allowing players to defeat the final boss and rescue the princess, before making you play the entire game in reverse from its last level to its first. I don't know, the, vo the voice sounds, it sounds really forced. It doesn't sound relaxed. I can hear the tension in it. Players are expected to undo all of their actions from the adventure, jumping on dead enemies to bring them back to life, catching launch projectiles as they're thrown, and generally undoing the actions typically done in this kind of adventure game. In spoiler alert, many of the levels you play through involve- Oh, Izzy, I don't doubt it probably was pitch shifted. Um, I talked about this with early Podquisition episodes the other day. Like the first like 30 episodes, plus of podquisition i pitch shifted myself up out of terror of people reacting negatively to my voice and i like gradually lessened the pitch shift episode by episode until it just like naturally went away i so there wasn't just one week i sound really different while finding cartoon enemies who are already dead and tasks you with finding out how to undo killing them enemies that were killed by being jumped on in a mario style way will appear in levels slumped on the ground with X's for eyes. By jumping on their bodies, you can undo- Yeah, God, this 
This is what I was doing a decade ago. Videos for YouTube kids. Um... I'll leave that there. I've done a lot of things over the years for different different places. And I was thinking about, like, I knew I'd done stuff that was, like, explaining video game applicableness to families. Like, is this game okay for kids in the past? Because, like, famously I did that for the BBC for a while. I was like, I'm sure many of you will remember that time I talked about Doki Doki Literature Club on the BBC. That was indeed a thing that happened. That was live on, like, BBC One's, like, six o'clock news. We should relish this moment. Huh. I saw right. just now. Go, go, go. I gotta speed through this dungeon. Show me what Come on, Ki don't make Kiryu fall asleep because I want to clear the room quick. It's my turn. Of course you made Kiryu fall asleep quick. That was exactly the thing I didn't want you to do. Of course you did it. The BBC still sometimes ask me to do video game stuff for them. Apparently they didn't get the message when I organized a protest outside their front door and did like a whole speech about like, I will never talk about video games on the BBC ever again until they sort their fucking transphobia bullshit out. Um, and every time they do and they offer me a, like a live opportunity, I'm always really tempted to say yes and just go on the air and when, when I'm on the air live go, yeah, no, I'm not actually going to talk about video games as you asked before. Um, sort out your transphobia problem, BBC. And just yeah. fucking uh, si uh, um, six, six o'clock lesbians, that, that shit, like chain myself to the desk and go, no, I'm staying here and I'm going to talk about transphobia at the BBC. Okay. I don't know. I don't know if, if you're aware of the six o'clock lesbians on the on the BBC. This was this was back in the eighties when Section Twenty Eight was coming into into being. Um, a group of lesbians uh, managed to sneak their way onto set uh, of the six o'clock news and uh, handcuff themselves to the set uh, in protest of Section Twenty Eight. That was. Uh... But Laura, that would make them sad. Oh, I know. What 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 would we do if I made the BBC a little bit sad? I've had, look, if I wanted to lesbians on the six o'clock news, if the, if the occasion occurred, I'm getting offered opportunities where I could, I could pull it off. It would not be hard for me to pull it off. And I'm keeping that in my back pocket because if I was going to do it, let's, let's, you know, hypothetically... I would want to do it on the heels of the BBC doing something specific and actionable and digging their heels in the way they did with that one article that I ran that protest about. If I were to maybe be offered a video game speaking opportunity at the BBC uh, right around the same time as something like that that the BBC were not like properly responding to, maybe in a situation like that I would I would pull that particular record. Look, the reason I haven't done it yet is purely because you only get one of look, you only get one opportunity to um, stage a live on TV or radio protest uh, before they go. Oh, you were ser oh you were serious with that protest shit, and uh, whatever list they somehow failed to ta to to take you off of, you finally get taken off of. You're gonna do it. You make it count. Oh, yeah, you're looking up about um, Section 28. Yeah, Section 28 didn't end until 2003. Section 20... For anyone who doesn't know, if you're outside of the UK, Section 28 was the UK's equivalent of, like, uh, Florida's current, like, don't say gay legislation. Um, it was legislation that existed from 1988 till 2003, explicitly uh, banning uh, LGBT education in schools and 
Uh, in practice, what it ended up doing was uh, silencing any discussion of any kind of uh, LGBT stuff. Like, it, again, like the Don't Say Gay Bill, like, it was sort of trying to suggest it was like, you just can't promote, uh, you know, uh, queer stuff. But in practice, that was, you keep fucking silent. And it had like a, it had a real long-term effect on like Here we go. queer recognition in the UK. Um, that's the thing, Izzy. Izzy, I'm surprised I'm not on the list of people to never invite on the BBC ever. Given that I, I organized a, I organized, I helped organize an open letter against the BBC that got like 750,000 fucking signatures. Organized a protest outside their front door. Um, got like international news coverage about the BBC being transphobic. There's a, there's a, there's a song, there's a rock song, uh, that, in, that includes a clip of me protesting how transphobic the BBC are in, in like a fucking piece of rock music. Um, the fact that the BBC somehow the message hasn't trickled down. Don't invite Laura to talk live on air. Like I'm, I'm mainly just impressed that somehow I'm not on that list yet. Because for a while I stopped getting invited. They stopped inviting me for a while. And then someone, like, clearly for forgot that I was meant to be on a don't invite list. Oh, treasure okay. Yeah, protesting on air would, would solidify it. And again, like, I'm, I'm not putting any form of protest off the table. Um... <laughs> hey, you, you, you know what the latest fuck the BBC on trans stuff uh, topic is? Um... The BBC last week, I believe it was, uh, distributed a nine-page document uh, telling news presenters that if someone on, if you get a guest on a BBC news show, and that guest refers to someone as transphobic, uh, whether you know whether it's demonstrably obviously true they are transphobic, BBC presenters are now required to um, object to that framing. If someone uses the word like transphobia or says so and so is is acting as a transphobe they are being transphobic the presenter has to say i no nah, i'm not so sure of like i'm not sure you should call them that um and that's <sighs> and it's fucking toothless and you know why it exists it's it's jk rowling she's throwing her fucking money around um allegedly i'll i'll do the i live in the uk where libel laws require that i'm going to put the word allegedly here um allegedly she is really fed up of being called a transphobe. She really fucking hates it. And has put a lot of uh, threatened lawsuit pressure on the BBC to specifically instigate a rule that says if someone gets called a transphobe, push back against it. Specifically so that no one guesting on shows can call her a transphobe and not be pushed back against by the host who seen, is seen as an authority figure, therefore undermining the accusation she's transphobic. Allegedly. Um, uh, b the biggest possible allegedly. Let's do it. Uh, fucking tiring. Here we go. Hey, remember how like three, four years ago, um, when people first found uh, Rowling's like tran uh, liking a bunch of transphobic tweets. Uh, she said that it was an accidental click on a tweet she didn't mean to click on, and she doesn't hold those views. Then, she, you know, she said, you know, if trans people were being were being uh, discriminated against in any way, I would be out there marching, you know, marching to help them defend their rights. And look at where we are now. Learning more every day. <sighs> oh, fuck her. Yeah, you know, allegedly, 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 allegedly. <laughs> Please don't sue me, Rowling. I don't have the fucking money. <laughs> because, you know. That's how Rowling is controlling the narrative. She has money, and uh, because she has money, I say allegedly with every sentence. Such as, allegedly, 
it sure seems like Rowling the other week was uh, specifically denying elements of the Holocaust. Allegedly, it seemed it seemed like she was doing that. Allegedly, it looked like she was denying Nazi book burnings, despite the most famous, uh, you know, image of a Nazi book burning literally being a book burning of trans literature. Uh, to the point that, like, Germany's government have previously had to come out and make official statements going, no, yeah, trans people were targeted by the Nazis. Uh, to deny that is to deny the Holocaust. Yeah, you know, Rowling sure did deny that Nazi book burnings of trans literature are a, was a real thing. Yeah, you know you you know it's a bad look when George Takai is having to come out and go, "Hey, stop denying, stop denying fascist war crimes." Um, when a celebrity who has literally been a prisoner of war steps up, like a, a queer prisoner of war steps up to go, "You are denying historical war crimes." It's not a fucking good look for you, allegedly. Uh, I fucking hate how. I've talked about this before. I used to be a fucking Harry Potter kid. Like, I, I made no secret of that. I, I talked about it the other day on stream. I used to go to midnight launches, like, dressed as Harry Potter. I still have seared into my brain um, the lines from a pantomime from, like, 15 plus years ago, where for some reason uh, we had it so Peter Pan, uh, Harry Potter showed up in Peter Pan, and I played Harry Potter, and I still remember all the fucking lines from when I played Harry Potter. I'm so proud of that role. And I am genuinely, like, quite disappointed that this person who, you know, was a, a kid, I really enjoyed their writing, despite, you know, as an adult looking back and seeing all of the real bad um, uh, replication of bigotry that goes on in those books. Uh, I was oblivious to as a kid, but it's, it's a real shame that she turned into a, a allegedly kind of a monster. Some would allege. Some would describe her behavior as monstrous. Some, some might do that. Uh, I'm glad I never got a fucking Harry Potter tattoo. <laughs> That's one thing I can be happy with. The, the one tattoo I have where I have to, like, caveat it is Ubisoft has turned into, like, a pretty fucking terrible abusive company. And I still, I don't regret having it, but I, can I get it on screen? The Law Bois, Laura as a rabbit with a, a hammer that looks like a, um, piranha plant because of the Mario and Rabbids Kingdom Battle stuff. I don't regret that tattoo, but it is one where I'm, like... Oh, Ubisoft, you really, you really had to be shit, didn't you? There we go, finally beat that room. Okay. That's probably progress. Ubisoft are goofing it up, but at least they're not allegedly Let's massive transphobes uh, in public. <sighs> I can say this for Ubisoft. No one at Ubisoft that I'm aware of has publicly denied that trans people were, t were targeted in the Holocaust as one of the groups that were targeted in the Holocaust. Um, so Ubisoft still allegedly got that up on allegedly Rowling. It is, it is the lowest possible bar, but sometimes the lowest possible bar is the only bar. Right, no time to lose. 
I mean, yeah, oh, look, the way. safest thing to do is to wait until a person's dead before you get a tattoo done, and even then it's no guarantee. Most, most of, I have very few tattoos that are, like, based on existing pieces of media. Most of my tattoos are dice funk tattoos. Um, I, I feel like I can be fairly safe in a lot of my tattoo choices. Um, I... I don't know if I've talked about my tattoos in a while. Um, I have one from a comic series that has long since ended that was a short run comic and I can be fairly confident isn't going to do anything shitty or transphobic because they don't make it anymore. Um, a series called Bitch Planet um, which was a sort of uh, it was sort of a parody of like uh, the exploitation genre um, but it was about a world in which um, non-traditional femininity was basically made illegal um think you're sort of like uh think something like the handmaid's tale but more specifically like um women who were uh fat who didn't behave the right ways who uh you know were gay uh, etc all get sent up to a prison in fucking space like an orbiting space prison um, and the gist of it is they start getting this uh they're all given this tattoo when they're like deemed not proper women, which is uh, the letters NC, non-compliant. And it's meant to be this sort of, like, brand that prevents them, like, if you somehow got off the, the prison spaceship, like, everyone would know you were a non-compliant. But it becomes this sort of badge of honor uh, and, like, a reclaimed symbol of these women whose womanhood is not what is traditionally accepted, but they have found solace and community in their womanhood. Um... It is a really interesting, yeah, uh, sounds like this T, uh, Vectron says, sounds like this TTRPG I heard of called Escape from Planet Matriarchy. Similar vibes. Um, yeah, it's a really interesting one, um, but specifically, like, it is very much um, women who have been told their womanhood doesn't count reclaiming their right to, to womanhood. Um, fucking fascinating series. Um, what was the name again? It's called Bitch Planet. Uh... But yes, it's uh, it's not a particularly long series. It's you know it's not it's not perfect, but I like the spirit behind it. Um, it's it's got a good it's got a good defiance to it. Um, there's something over there. What's up with the hashtags? Oh, they've been a thing for a while. We did some side quests early on in this game uh, that chat really latched onto. Um, Hashtag citrus bitches was a side quest in which this kid was running a lemonade stand because he wanted to raise money to buy a tiara for like the woman who ran the orphanage because like she was going to be moving away because she was getting married. She's moving to New York and he wanted to do something really nice for her. And the ending of that plot line is some influencer notices the lemonade stand and makes a post and the lemonade stand gets really popular so we can afford to buy the tiara. But her, her Instagram post that makes the lemonade stand really famous is it's just a picture of this kid behind a lemonade stand and the 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 te <laughs> the caption on the image is just hashtag citrus bitches. And we found it fucking hilarious. Uh, so that stuck around. And then the very next stream, we were doing um, a side quest to do with this uh, lifeguard. And he referred to the ocean as um, th that beautiful blue bitch. So then it, it just became a thing that we had team hashtag citrus bitches and hashtag uh, beautiful blue bitches. Um, the, the two running, you know, what, what team in chat are you on? Are you a citrus bitch or a blue, beautiful blue bitch? Um. Oh, Vectron? I. I think it was bitches that love citron. Uh, citrus. I think that was the gist, but there was no. It was a hashtag. There was no. Um. Uh. Punctuation. It was just hashtag citrus bitches. Um. <laughs> Yeah, hashtag toilet bitches didn't quite catch on. Uh, you know, chat tried, but, you know. You got 500 toilets on that island, you didn't get get an accompanying hashtag going. Um, but yes, uh, uh, no, the non-compliant tattoo from, from Bitch Planet is one where, like, I, I got that um, right when, around the time that Writing about video games full time was going to be my job. Uh, I was just about to go in for lower surgery. It was a really like a time of 
claiming my right to be myself in womanhood. It was a lot of my journey to be myself had sort of reached the end of the list of tasks I needed to do. Felt like the right time for it, and it's it's just a nice, chunky, not obvious what it is. I like that one a lot. Looks like they could use some um, what other ones have I got? So I've got um, Frank Westerly um, surrendering in Hollow Deck from season four of Dice Funk, uh, the one where I played the Yu-Gi-Oh wizard, um, and he basically surrenders in a match against the Seto Kaiba teenager because uh, he can tell like it's going to mean a lot to him to you know him him losing would cause problems with his dad and Frank's like he's going to be the bigger person about it. Uh, I've got shiny, shiny blue ditto, which I got when uh, we finally finished the uh, the first 151, uh, the Kanto living shiny decks. Uh, I've got brand, the brand, the brand, brand, which is the fake energy drink brand that sponsors uh, Nifix in the Dice Funk season where I play a little gamer gnome assassin that destroys reality, kind of. Um, I've got the Dysphoria Monster from me and my Dysphoria Monster. I have a PS4 Slim controller, the one with the, the little light at the top of the, the touch bar, after which I got after the uh, PS4 Slim unboxing and review thing. Dana Lyon says, Laura, Izzy needs you to be less good to watch because she's got a 5.30am coach to catch and needs to sleep. I'm sorry, I'm just so goddamn inter entertaining. I can't help it. I'm just too watchable. Sorry about that. <laughs> um, I have a couple of My Chemical Romance tattoos, because of course I do. I'm, I'm trash like that. Um, I've got my I Am Not Afraid to Keep On Living Famous Last Words tattoo, and I've got the uh, sort of sigil that was the iconography for their uh, reunion tour. Um... With all of its uh, a summoning uh, iconography, I have um, Liam Moira Melbeck, the space hippo drunk captain from Dice Funk, giving um, uh, dra drag uh, Conrad's uh, big grumpy orc a hug at his birthday party after having got him a uh, ple please do not talk to me right now. I would like no social contact. Uh, plaque as a, as a birthday present at a birthday party he wasn't enjoying. I have my uh, my uncomfortable labels uh, uh, neck, uh, the, the sort of uh, fabric tag tattoo. A Let's Play Video Games logo. I have a rainbow dandelion from season 3 of uh, Dice Funk with Veltari uh, in the, the the guilt mirror, the, the feelings mirror. Uh, Reassuring her younger self, it's okay, it's not your fault, you are loved and safe. I feel so heavy. That allowed her to escape from the from the bubble town. Most of my tattoos are my dice funk ones. I have a, I need to catch up on them. I'm a few behind, but I want to have a tattoo for every season of dice funk I finish. Yeah, Rainbow Dandelion. It was a whole. It was a whole thing. Um, I played a. A sort of demon, like a, 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 a badass, uh, a tiefling, um, who came into this town, uh, you know, maybe not with the best of intentions and a little uh, not a great person, and learned to be a good person in this this uh, tiny isolated town and went from like badass to, you know, person dealing with her, fixing her own her own childhood trauma to trying to be a good person yeah. and making friends uh, in this trapped little bubble town. It was... Veltari still might be my favourite Dice Funk character. I love her so much. You never, you never forget your first, your first campaign character that you stick with the whole way. Veltari was something special. Oh, th there are there are episodes of season three of Dice Funk where Ve Veltari cries, and it's not it's not 
it's not me acting really well. I'm just genuinely crying on the fucking recording. There's 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 a couple of those. The v Veltari in the 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 mirror, uh, doing the like repentance, um, getting rid of the guilt in the mirror. Yeah, that's like just actual me me crying because it, it got a little too close to home. And I, f I had a moment on air where, like, yeah, I'm playing a character, but I feel like I'm forgiving my actual younger self for things that were not my fault, but I've kind of blamed myself for for years. It's that thing where you don't intend it, but sometimes D&D &D turns into therapy, and you go, ah, oh, fuck. I've invented me here. And by healing this fictional character's trauma, I've accidentally done work on myself. No begging for mercy now. It's always fun in Dungeons and Dragons when you go, oops, I've therapied myself. Yeah, there's there's a few characters. I've I've talked about this before. There's a few characters in Dice Funk where I look back on them and I'm on, I'm like, I was working through some of my own shit when that character was wrong. Like, I know the big, like, maybe the big one for me of that was, um, uh, Frank Westerly 100% came out of, like, a time in my life where I was really... I think there's something over there. I was trying to come to terms with the fact that my relationship with my dad was never going to be good, and that that was just never going to be okay, and that my dad had been kind of shit my whole life. And for me, resolution on that was playing... Going... I feel kind of shit about having had a dad who was never there and, like, never had any intention to be there. So I'm going to play a dad who isn't there, but, like, his whole thing is... He desperately, like, he genuinely desperately wants to be there and he's fighting to make it happen. And just because he's not there doesn't mean he's not doing everything in his power to to be there someday. And, like, that was, that was me working through some shit. And that's the end of it. It, it was one where it was me play, playing out... It was me playing out what, as a kid, I'd always imagined my dad was. It, as, as a kid, I imagined my dad wasn't present, but was like, you know, it's out of his control, and he's probably fighting to someday make it happen that he'll be there. And he wasn't, but... I, I played out the dad that I always imagined my dad was when I was a little kid, and that was... There was something healing in that. This is biological dad, yeah. My, my stepdad is in the picture. He's wonderful. Um, he is the dad who was there, though, he, despite not needing to be. And I... When you have, like, a biological parent who's not present in your life, and you have a step-parent who, like, by choice has always been there, I, I don't know about anyone else, but to me, my stepdad is dad. He, he will always be more of a dad than my biological dad was, because, you know... He had no biological tie to me. There was nothing stopping him leaving, and he never did. And when you have someone who brought you, literally brought you into the world, not stick around. Having someone who hasn't, doesn't have that tie but chooses to be there, it means a lot. It's why my stepdad walked me down the aisle at my wedding, and my biological dad was not invited to the wedding. You know. Life is what it is, and uh, you know my my stepdad was the one who walked me down the aisle and 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 gave a little speech at my wedding, and he will always be dad. He is the reason that dad joke. He is the the dad behind dad jokes jingle. Dad jokes jingle. They're 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 real cheesy cheesy jokes. Those entirely exist because. My my stepdad was present in my childhood, shh, pummeling me with terrible puns. Don't get carried away. God, that man is the reason my sense of humor is the way it is. No begging for mercy now. Ooh. Let's go, go, go. Oh, 
Why is this fight taking me so long? Come on. I'm glad people liked Frank as a dad. I wanted him to be I wanted him to be flawed, but ultimately someone who people could would root for I hope he gets his kids back. Because his one big his one big character flaw was, uh, again, one rooted in my own life was uh, crippling crippling card game addiction, which uh, you know there was a period of time where I was briefly a ranked uh, Yu-Gi-Oh player in the UK, and then um, compulsive purchasing loops around trading card booster packs uh, kind of became a problem for me for a while. Uh, to the point of detriment, and oops, Frank Westerly was born. God, I'm suddenly remembering season 4 Dice Funk and the number of scenes in that that were just... The downtime scenes were just, Frank has an awkward... Uh, trip out with his kids and his very young daughter who absolutely loves him and his teenage son who is really dubious. God, that was... I... I... Oh. Oh, taking the kids to feed the ducks. Oh, God. Yeah, Frank... Frank... Frank sure... Frank sure existed. Oh, so mild. I, I guess this is technically a spoiler. I've been invited to be on the next two seasons of Dice Funk after this. What, what are we doing? Is it season 10 right now? I think I've been invited to be on 11 and 12. I have not thought at all about characters. I know in theory what the premises of seasons 11 and 12 of Dice Funk are going to be. I just don't, haven't done the thing that is a huge amount of emotional labor where I sit down and invent a whole new person. But I'm happy to be for 9 to 12 months. I have to invent a human that I'm happy to, to just become for a while. That's a commitment. I'm not I'm not ready to invent entire new people yet. Here we go. Allow me. There's part of me that is still sad about what happened to uh, Elith in in season eight, and is like, would anyone stop me just making Neelith again, but in a different setting, a different campaign, and just do that character again, but let them have like a good happy ending? Can I can I just can I just do over a character and like ask the Dice Funk fandom to just like not not point out that I've done that? <laughs> Cookie Wyvern says, you feel so essential to Dice Funk. Not having you in a season would be so weird to me. I'm the longest serving, like, consistent Dice Funk cast member other than Austin, because Austin was a player on season one, DM of season uh, season two. Um, Austin aside, I am the only other per person who's been here, been there that long. I've been season three to present. Anyone else who was around in season three and is still around today has at some point not been on a season. It's... It's a world I feel very lucky to have been a part of building over many years. Surely reincarnation could happen in the Dice Funk universe. I mean, I cut... <sighs> Nifix kind of fucked up the, re like, the idea of reincarnation. Um, she kind of fucked up the whole afterlife system a bit. Um, and now we do kind of have... You know, bringing people back to life uh, in the world of resurrection, but I doubt anyone, you know, however much longer in the future, has a portion of uh, her body hanging around just in case reincarnation tech comes into being. You know, because like in theory, season eight of Dice Funk took place at the bottom of the mountain where the new the portal to the new world was at the top. That portal to the new world leads to, eventually, the place where resurrection can happen. 
Someone from season eight could have kept part of uh, Neelith's body, trekked it up the hill, put it in the queue for resurrection in season ten. If there is a compelling argument to be made, it could be so that she could she could come back. We are literally doing a season about if you have a piece of someone's body, you can get them vibe checked and and brought back. And I I'm pretty certain Neelith would pass the vibe check system. Oh, you got murdered by a fascist cop sheep while trying to create police reform um, on, like, the day of your we wedding analog, uh, basically lesbian wedding turn into a jellyfish. Yeah, you can probably come back. I, look, I, I don't think, I don't know that it's interesting to bring, to bring her back. I feel like... But for all the people that, you know, have their feelings about that scene, you know, whether they, they liked it or not, or whether they think it was a good choice of the narrative, what I will say is, I think there is a degree of it might undercut her character to bring her back. But, equally, I can see arguments for it. Like, I, I don't know... I don't know if it's a me thing to do. Because the problem is... To, for, you know what the biggest problem with it is? Dice Funk is intended to be a show that you can jump into any season and not need to have listened to a previous season to get what's going on. And I feel like bringing Neelith back would have baggage that would really require people to have listened to season 8. I don't know a way in which you bring Neelith back that, that doesn't a, a little bit hinge on understanding what went down in season eight. Yeah, like I've look, I've thought about ways that, that Neelith could come back. And that it it could it, it's just I don't know whether that's an interesting thing to explore. I don't I don't know if it's interesting to dig that character back up because that character was so built on a presence in a story about rehabilitation and I don't know what her role is in a different like I, I don't know what role she would fill in a different story oh yeah no if I ever like seriously thought about bringing her back I would like I would obviously talk it over with the, with the other players I'm talking it through here because it's a uh, I, I don't see a world in which realistically I do it, but I like to believe. And there's a little bit of me that wants my autistic trans girl squid jellyfish uh, uh, chef with all of her little brain puns to just be able to have a happy life. Like, here's the thing. I don't know if I would bring her back. You know what I would I do and I would be open to? Let's say during season 10, either Quinn or Austin decided to make it canon that someone being vibe checked by the vibe checkers or someone whose body part had passed a vibe check and was going to get thrown in a resurrection hole. If one of those two DMs were to decide that it was interesting in their story for Neelith's body to be someone had brought it and put it in the queue... And that maybe, you know, it's not me playing the character, but it, it became canon that, like, the character had been brought back. I could... St I, I would find that really sweet. I would really like that. I don't think that's likely, and that's not... It's not my... This is, season 10 is not my, my story to direct. But I think I could see that more than I could see myself bringing Neelith back as a player character. Good thing I'm not a DM on this season, because if I was, I, it, it would be real hard for me to resist the urge to just, like... I, I would be sat here tonight going, fuck, I need to rewrite my next arc for doing that. Like, if I was DMing this season, there's a very good chance that the very next e episode recorded, I'd be like, nah, nah, actually, yeah, need Just offhand comment, Neil needs one of the bodies in the queue. Oh, you've got such 
Not such HP, sir. Why do you have such HP? They're already ironclad chef. Yeah, I've thought about this before. Me, Lit's the only like the only D and D character I've had who, who uh, died in a campaign. She's the only one who hasn't survived a campaign. I think of the characters, and I fucking mourned. I mourned. I mourned her dearly. God damn. God, God damn, my heart aches for her. Now, don't heal yourself. You have too big of an HP bar already. I don't have enough resources to kill you, Ironclad Chef, if you're going to keep healing yourself. Haha, done. How many how many rescued people have we done now? I'm perfect. Gotta be most of them. How do you feel, um... Uh, Cookie Wyvern, look, I don't want to get into too much depth other than, um... It's... I'm really glad that, uh, that that player is not on the show, because, uh, if they had been on the show when those allegations came out, it would have been real fucking awkward. Um... Um, I have no reason to not believe the uh, accusers, um, very specifically, um, she's admitted to some of the shit, so, like, sucks. Suck. Real, real sucky situation. I'm not, I'm not hugely in the mood to get into it other than I will say, um, it's really fucking bad for optics when, um, you basically give transphobes the ammunition to go, see, when we made wild accusations that uh, Predator was in the ba in the bathroom, uh, you know, that wasn't transphobic, we, we were just right. Like, it, it's really fucking helpful. Um, it's not great. But anyway, yeah. Um, I want to, uh, change of topic, I want to talk about like an, an, a, a weird avant-garde out there dice funk one shot idea I have and I don't know if it works but I want to do it and I'm going to say it out loud to like get a sense of whether people think this would be a good idea for a way to do a one shot in dice funk um there is a um there is an RPG that exists called Alice is Missing um and the entire point of it is that when it's traditionally played it's done in real time over 90 minutes as a group text a, a group chat over text. You spend 90 minutes not saying any words out loud, um, communicating via a text chat to tell the story of a group of friends looking for their friend Alice who's gone missing. Um, the way it's typically done is that like every 10 minutes or so a card, like someone will turn a card over and it will introduce a new element to add to the story. Um, and you just sit for 90 minutes having a very frantic text uh, text chat conversation. Uh, there will be lulls in conversation. There will be periods where it gets really busy. And you spend 90 minutes real time like going through where is our missing friend. Now, obviously that makes for not great audio. Um, so the way I would want to do it if I was going to do Alice is Missing as a Dice Funk one shot would be... Uh, doing it the, the way it's meant to be done. 90 minutes just silently sat texting each other uh, as a group of players. Then, when it's done, all of the players go through the text log and record all of their lines from the text chat. Um, 
and someone, presumably me, would have to do a lot of editing to basically go through the 90 minutes and play everyone's messages at the time they came through during the 90 minute text chat. And occasionally you'll get people like scrambling to talk and maybe talking over each other a little. Um, but to make this like 90 minute audio drama out of a frantic 90 minute text chat, I don't know whether that works. But I love the thought of doing it because Alice is Missing is one of my favorite RPGs. It is a fantastic framework for really good dramatic storytelling where like, you tell an entire complete, very emotionally gripping narrative between four characters in like 90 minutes. And I love the thought of finding a way to bring it to Dice Funk, but it requires adaptation. And like, I would have to find a group of people who'd be willing to give that a go with the knowledge that it might just not work in practice when, when done, but would still be willing to commit to, to giving it a try. And it would not be my usual, like, find the silly, goofy lot. It would be... I'd want a group of people who'd be there to do, like, real getting into it roleplay. Here we go. If you pulled that off, it'd be amazing, but I don't think you really need more projects right now. I always need more projects. Uh, I always need more stuff to do. Um, <laughs> but yes, I, I want to give a go at making Alice is Missing into something that works as audio. It's, it's just finding a group of people who want to who wanna give it a go. Um, the first time I played it, um, I sat for like 40 minutes afterwards just going, yeah, that happened, huh? I mean, it sounds like a lot of work, but like no no more work than... Like, it's not going to take like the week plus, like the two weeks that the Sujimon rap took. Come on, Kiryu. Uh... Okay, I need to heal. There's my good heals. Get those on you. I'm nearly at the bottom of this dungeon. We've nearly done all of the dungeon crawling for Team Kiryu. God, yeah, we're already at like level 50 across the party. This is great. The other one I've got that I've never done, but I have, like, the book for is, um, there is a Mighty Morphin Power Rangers TTRPG, um, I have the core, the core rule, rule book for. I want to find a, a good excuse to do something with the Power Rangers RPG, uh, rule set for a one-shot. Oh, I want more. Ma I want to. I want to be a magical girl. I want to be a magical girl. Yeah, I have some silly. I have some silly um, rule set things. I would love to do. Actually, there's at least one. I think there's at least one one shot that has been recorded, but I don't know when when will ever get used. I believe there's at least one. Pokemon one shot that people haven't heard that's out there somewhere. It's floating on a hard drive. Now we're talking. Watch this. Hope this hurts. Allow me. Okay, uh, fuck it. Lesbian. Uh, shellfish, go win us the fight. There we go, we're leveling up real quick. Have we cleared this floor out? Almost. I I want to do the Chuck Tingle RPG at some point. I have the core rule book for the uh, the Tingle verse Chuck Tingle uh, RP, uh, tabletop RPG, which I have never I've never run a game of, but I I deeply wish to. 
be pounded in the butt by my own butt uh, person. <laughs> Oh, almost left this behind. Okay, let's move. Okay, two more floors. We can fix this at a reasonable time tonight. Chuck Tingle is an international treasure. They might need a hand. Oh. If you've never read, there's a there's a so Chuck Tingle is autistic and has talked previously about the fact that um, he he wears a paper bag over his head every time he uh, does like speaking engagements, author events, uh, convention appearances, or whatever. There was a there was a library he was going to go do a talk at and they they refused to let him do the talk unless he took the paper bag off his head and he was like no fuck you and didn't do it because it's a fucking it's an accessibility accommodation. He's an autistic person who's found the thing that helps him to not. You know, not fucking have a meltdown in a high social situation. Like, real, real interesting read, but yeah, got, got, yeah. Uh, Evelyn Boyd says, speaking of lesbian, anyone else crushing on the pink hair lady? Uh, everyone, everyone crushes on Sion He. Um, she's, she's hot and she's got dangerous knives between her fingers. What's not to like? You look at that and go, mm, mm. yeah, if you gently raked those sharp needles across me, I'd freeze in slightly horny terror. I mean, what? Uh, Artisan, have a good night. What are all these? Stop powering each other up. Just let me do a pound mate summon. It will be good. sent a message and I'm trying to process it and whether I need to I will work out whether I'm going to respond to that in a minute uh. It's too late at night, too late on a Friday, too late in the week to ask me to make big decisions. Are you done with all the funny games yet? Follow my lead. Oh, oh. oh yeah, do that again. Hell yeah, carry you. Got this. Oh yeah, we're making like three or four million now from some fights. We can afford to be using those pound mates. I think there's something over there. All the rescues we've done now. Uh, there might be one left on the last floor. No begging for mercy now. Okay, I'm gonna keep that open on that tab. I'll deal with that in a minute. Here we go. Here we go. Fuck him up. Use the lesbian, the lesbian shellfish yet again to demolish my enemies. 
Lighting dynamite, I need to kick your ass before you set that off. Sadistic heal, we can do that. Really not as strong as I had hoped it would be. Get a jump to throw the dynamite, please. Have fun with this. Hope this hurts. Okay, I can get at least one of them down before they explode. That's good. Let's do it. God, the combo attacks feel so nice in this. Once you get friendship points high enough that you can just, like, regular attacks combo into multi-hits, it's such a satisfying system, this. Okay. Move around this way and hopefully find a dead end soon. Right. Okay, this is the exit to floor 28, so there's one floor left after this. Clear the end of this out nice and quick. I think I see something. I really appreciate in the dungeons in this. Genuinely accessibility feature. The the characters doing a little shout of like, oh I think I see something. Uh, when there's a little sparkle in a corridor or a room that is pick upable in this dungeon, uh, so that I don't accidentally miss all the good pickups I'm, I'm supposed to be getting in the dungeon because I fail to notice a little sparkle. I appreciate these tiny little dialogue lines so much. It's just the big health ironclad chef really left now. Uh. I am going to plow through the story parts of Kiryu after this. I'm pretty sure, like, the whole party at level, basically level 50, should be... I think I think I was, like, level 52, level 54 when I completed Kiryu's half of the story. Um, but, like, we are real ready for, like, Kiryu to, to finish the, the, the final boss of the Kiryu half. We are uh, pretty appropriately leveled for. Despite having not finished the story stuff. Like, I've got to get everyone good weapons before we finish up, but realistically, that's that's the only thing we really need to focus on. Ooh, t uh, yeah, use the tag team on you. Because the other one's weaker, we can get the regular attack. I won't hold back. Uh, Eastern time is what? It's gonna be five hours different from. Okay, I'm trying to do math for a thing. Okay, Kiri, yeah, Kiri, you, you finish this, you fucking up. Oh, 
carry you. Does need her. Yeah, Terra, thank you for the heads up. I, I just caught it. Uh hundred. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fuck it. I'm gonna I'm gonna deal with this work thing very quickly because otherwise it's just gonna be distracting me during the stream. Um Yeah, number. I've got work emails and they don't want to wait for me. That's what's wrong, number. Let's do it. All right, let's finish it together. We only need one. Right, secrets time, Dandelion, and they're not ones that I can tell you about this time. Although, actually, if I, like, finish this email now, I could maybe, by the end of this stream, talk about this particular secret. It's mainly a case of I can't talk about it until I know what I'm doing with it. <laughs> secret secrets are no fun. Secret secrets tell someone. That is not good advice to follow, but it's it's what goes through my head every time I know a secret, is to be like, secret secrets, go on, go on. Clearing house. Okay, we found the exit, didn't we? Yeah, so we're just scouring for any remaining people that need rescuing, which I don't think is going to be a thing because I think we rescued someone already on this floor, but I'm just trying to be better safe than sorry. Whoa. Yeah, it's a mimic. You have to deal yourself. I almost had you.
Cool, oh, I think I have finished the thing. Means that I might actually be able to just talk about what I've been sat sorting. Uh, yeah, fuck it, I think I can say this. Um, it looks like I might be attending the second annual Able Gamers uh, Gala next week, which I believe is Saturday of next week, 4pm uh, EST uh, to 8pm EST, I believe, which is sort of, hey, uh, it's, an, it's an event uh, running virtually, uh, hang out with a bunch of internet e types, uh, listen to some lovely talks, do some stuff to support uh, Able Gamers, a wonderful charity uh, who do fantastic work uh, helping helping disabled players get access to uh, the things they need to to play video games. Um, they're, they're, they're doing their annual gala uh, next week, and it's looking like I will be there, so that's cool. And a virtual gala. It's nice that there is a, like, a gala in to do with accessibility that you do not need to attend in person, risking... Hey, if you're immunocompromised, if, like, travel is a problem, if just being in a room full of, like, real pe like physical people that you can't get away from or, like, turn the volume down on is a problem. Hey, here is a very accessibly-minded, uh, accessibility-minded way of putting a gala on. So that is cool. Last year's one was wonderful. No second for mercy. Here we go. Oh, speaking of like accessible setups for things, um, uh, special effect. We're at uh, the Insomnia Gaming Fest, uh, gaming convention in the UK, uh, or they are this weekend. Um, one of special effects uh, staff is attending virtually through a iPad on a on a stick, uh, answering questions and talking with people who have questions about the accessibility tech being shown, but doing so remotely without having to be in a crowded convention center. Yeah. If if you saw the uh, the accessibility summer showcase last year, uh, the one of the, uh, the 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 founders of Able Gamers, uh, Steve Spawn, was uh, did did a little chat about accessibility in the uh, during during the showcase. Um, I believe his was the one about uh, the my my dreaded enemy, one very small step. playing video games in his friend's garage with him. Yeah, the the one single step where you get the venue going, oh no no, we're accessible, we we, we don't like have stairs, quote. You know, we oh, oh we have like one step, but like that that that's not gonna be a problem, is it? No begging for mercy now. Yes, the single step that they don't even register they have, they don't even consider that it would be a problem. Okay, final floor. And that's the end of it.
I won't hold back. Now then. I'm over here. Are you done with all the fun and games yet? <sighs> ah, nearly done with the worky bits. Done. I think I'm done. I think I'm not working now. Sorted the things. I will make sure next week to share information about the Angel Gamers Gala so that if anyone is interested in it, they know all about it and where to find out more about it. I will sort. I will, I will, I will be sure to promote that that is happening next week. Hooray for, pla for planning accessibility-related appearances while midstream. My schedule is a mess. Everything happens in the heat of the moment. Oh, break this lone shark's bones. Do it, Sion here. You've got it. Dandelion says, my least favourite is the un the entirely unnecessary single step. Even worse than ones that serve a practical uh, use, though still need a ramp. Um, yeah, there's... I have seen some unnecessary single steps in my time. Um... The, the, the worst I've seen is ones where uh, I've gone with someone to an event where, like, the venue said, yeah, we're accessible, we're accessible, we're accessible. And when you get there, what you find out, you find out what they mean is, we're pretty confident we can carry you and the chair down if we get a couple of people and, like, hold on tight and lift. We can probably do it. Like, that's... You're not an accessible venue if that's required. <laughs> You, 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 the answer to the question, are you accessible, is no, we're happy to try and make accommodations, but we aren't. We aren't inherently an accessible venue. Like, just be fucking honest about it. It's my turn. Oh, all of my characters are real, real low on resources now. Here we go. Just get get through this. Ready for the knockout. <laughs> Let's do it. Cass, Cass Fireborn says you also get the fun ones where most is accessible, it's just the bathrooms that aren't. Uh, just the bathrooms that aren't. Yeah. Um So the BAFTA thing I put up this week about uh, special effect was, you know, it is primarily a piece about special effect. There's a little bit of stuff talking in there about BAFTA's accessibility stuff. Um, 
I I didn't want to derail and make the whole thing about BAFTA, uh, despite BAFTA wanting, you know, having some stuff they wanted chatted about. But I did get to see um, behind the scenes on, like, uh, the stuff that basically read through BAFTA's accessibility uh, and disability representation policy. Um, and, you know, I can't show the document, but I can talk about stuff that's in there. Uh, it's not a problem. Um, BAFTA as an organization really seem to have their stuff uh, together accessibility-wise, which is really nice. Um, uh, any of their award shows, they make sure that um, there is always uh, they, they, their aim is for there always to be at least uh, at least one, if not a couple, of disabled people uh, involved in in uh, you know having an awards and whatnot. Um, all effort, uh, all areas of the venue that the awards are taking place in have to be fully accessible um, to all all the users. Uh, the red carpet, uh, the venue has to be accessible. Uh, with disabled users able to use the same red carpet as everyone else, they can't have a separate accessible red carpet entrance. Um, the stage uh, has to be fully accessible uh, so that anyone uh, can safely make it from the seating area up onto stage if they need to, without uh, having to take a separate route to any of the other you know, people handing out um, awards. Uh, they have uh, BSL at all their events. They have um, uh, quiet areas, easy to find for if you need somewhere away from the event to quietly be. Um, which I think of from my head, one of the stuff I know they've got uh, available. But yeah, they have to really have a good accessibility policy for their award shows. Um. I think I see something. Is it a Should is I it a it? mimic? It's gonna be a mimic. I can. No, it's not a mimic. Okay. Um. Go this way. See if we can finish up a loop. We can, so we can ignore that way now. Yeah, the sting the single stair can be a problem for a lot of for a lot of uh, electric. Electric wheelchairs for sure. Should I open it? Nice. Like talking off the record, like not off the record's the wrong term. Off the record makes it sound like it's a thing that I'm not supposed to say. Uh, speaking, speaking in a vague in a vague term about the thing. Um, I was trying to help someone find a venue for a, for an event at some point, and we were like trying to find an accessible uh, venue and like going through all the various considerations of which venues might be accessible. Um, and the number of things that, like, you have to think about, uh, that so many venues don't consider. Um, like, to talk about a venue that was being looked at, um, the venue itself, definitely accessible. Um, there were no, like, uh, the route from the, ne the nearest train station was accessible, the venue itself was accessible, there were dropped curbs at all junctions required between the train station and the venue, which is all great. But there is an uphill from the train station to the venue, and having to go and do the research of what like angle is this up uh, incline, and what angle of incline is generally agreed to be like a, a safe, reasonable, doable incline for various kinds of wheelchair users, be it manual or electric. Uh, and does the uphill between these two points, like, does does it fit? Like, is this is this kind of uphill, like, slightly uphill road, an accessibility barrier? It's not the nearest public transport point or the venue itself, but you gotta you gotta look big picture. And that a lot of that is the stuff I don't think venues put the work into doing is going. How are you actually getting to our venue? That is part of whether our venue is accessible. Final, final floor before the boss. Ooh, 
Ooh, that was a nasty hit to kill you. Okay, I think I can hit both of them this tag team. Oh, I should have been able to kill you up. Okay, you've only got to survive one. Uh... Heal and empty up Kiryu. Okay, numbers down. We can do it, we can do it, we can do it. Tion he is down. We're fine though, we're fine, we're good. Number, please tell me you have the MP to heal everyone. Ah, that'll do. Almost cleared the floor, then it's the boss, then we're good. Daniline says, one thing I noticed when they redid the center of Gateshead a few years ago is they put in a publicly accessible lift, so you can avoid a steep hill between the transport interchange and many of the shops. No idea if that still works, but I've not seen that out in public before, accessible from the street. I only know of one of those, and it is in uh, Brighton. Because um, if you're leaving Brighton's main train station, there's like the big sloping road down to the beach, but if you go out the back of the station, there's like a big set of steps down if you're heading to like the sort of shop area. Um, but there is a publicly accessible lift that just avoids taking the big staircase. Um, and I've, I've never seen a thing like that elsewhere. Oh, just uh, outside in, in the wild, here is a publicly accessible lift that just exists for <laughs> making it easier to get to like the high street and the shops. Whoa. Oh, it's just one. Oh, I was gonna say it's just one death set, but he's calling him back up. Okay, Kiri, you're gonna you're gonna fuck him up. We'll be fine. Here you. Here we go. Here we go. Okay, final boss. Final boss of the Kiryu dungeon. The time hath come. I'm going a really long way to this. <laughs> At least we're going to get the party full healed. My lead. And I can do a save. Which means we won't have to redo the whole dungeon if we fuck this up. Um, sure, a cat. Feel free to ask an uncomfortable labels question. Uh, even if it comes up later, I will do my best to, to answer. Something incredibly tough waiting on the other side of this door. What is it? Oh, is it the fight? I think it is. I don't. Okay, no, it's not the one I was thinking of. Well, now, you finally made it. I've been expecting you. Oh, it's the guy who we met at the top of here, who was introducing us to this place. What are you doing here? Ha 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 ha. 
Oh. Oh. Did the social flowcharts actually work? Was it just like a list of conversation topic ideas? Okay. Yes, social flowcharts did work for me. This was like a different time in my life. But basically it was... Uh, I can give you an example of a social flowchart. Uh, it, it would be something like, um, oh, hey, hi, how are you? Haven't seen you in a while as like an opener. Um, and then you've got like, do they uh, respond with, I've been doing well, thanks. How about you? Or I've uh, been pretty rough, actually, or whatever. Is, is it a positive or a neutral response? And then preparing like a default response to like, I've introduced and I've asked them how they're doing. If they respond with, uh, it, if they respond neutrally, how do I respond? If they respond positively, how do I respond? If they respond negatively, how do I respond? And, like, mapping out what... It, if I start a conversation this way, what are the likely responses that tend to happen? How am I expected to respond to those responses? And, like, thinking through what is the... Ex like, if someone, if someone... If I ask how someone's doing to, like, start a conversation, how, how have you been? And they give a non-committal answer, what am I supposed to take from that, and, like, what is the socially contra uh, uh, respected, like, way you respond to that? Is, like, uh, do they just not feel like, not feel like telling you? Do they uh, actively not want to tell you? Has it just been very bland, and there's nothing really to gain from it? Which of, like, if you're not sure which of those is going on, what's a safe response to do in lieu of knowing, like, what answer can you give that no matter what they mean by that ambiguous thing they've said, that, like, it won't be a problem that you've responded that way. And it was trying to map out conversations like that. It was, what are the likely possible response categories? What do they likely mean? What is the safe, acceptable response to those points down the flowchart? Um, do, does, that, does that make sense? Like, it wasn't perfect, but, like, it was a, it was a system that got me through things. So Okay, this guy is annoyed not to be noticed as being cool. That's why we gotta fight him. He wants to be like an anime character. Hmm. Okay. Okay, he's gonna try and make a new group and become the boss of that. Um, but oh no, we're gonna fuck up his plans. He wants to be king of the Jincho underworld, but we probably got him. Oh, oh, it's this guy with his fucking eye. I remember these fucking eye lasers being a nightmare of a problem. Numbers just on healing duty every fucking turn. I remember this, this fight. Here we go. Wanna play, do we? 2,000 damage plus hopefully poison. Um. Please inflict poison. No. Okay, we do essence of remembrance on him. That's another eight thirty. Then stashed bottle needs to be used so that we can at the very least keep uh, Kiryu topped up. Yeah, it was more like not not a, not necessarily exclusive to small talk, but it was like, what are com common conversation types that might come up? What is the expected like? Resp it was it was mapping out what is the social niceties of conversation and the things that like very commonly someone will start a conversation with you over or that you are expected to start a conversation with what are the expected responses and like the things that you do to like fly under the radar of i don't know how to respond to this social question you're posing me uh like if someone if someone says how are you your options are if someone asked how i am as a start of a conversation my options are be honest about how i'm doing or say the socially expected nice response and like what in what situations do i follow the say honestly how you're doing side of the flow chart and in which like making notes to go if this is the situation be honest about uh, be honest in your response to how have you been versus if this is the situation give the generic response to how, how you've been etc it was trying to map out the unspoken rules and like put them to paper in a way where i could follow them and act upon them and go this is a followable practice here we 
go. Okay. Yeah. Do this again in the hopes I can get a poison off. Allow me. No poison. Okay. Uh, Thimba says, Laura, how do you feel about being a little adorable crow and doing crow things? I love the thought of being an adorable little crow doing crow things. Is this an option? Can I sign up to be an adorable little crow and do adorable little crow things? Like hop around on a roof and and be be bird shaped? Uh, health is probably fine actually to keep. Doing regular attacks so that we can keep the HP up. You're gonna get me a link that will allow me to be an adorable little crow doing crow things. That sounds like a great link, Thimber. Yeah, I don't want to overuse Namba's healing because it is gonna get us drunk, and that's not ideal. Let's finish it together. We only need one shot. Okay, Namba, you're gonna need to do heal again. Okay, this is something from the Rain on Your Parade devs. This was the game where you play a little rain cloud fucking up everyone's day. Um, oh, you play as a crow causing all sorts of goofy chaos. Just crow things. That is a cool thing. And a link that suggests I can tell them I'd like a code for work purposes and they would send me one. I should probably contact them. That sounds like a thing I would like to do. It would be to my benefit to do, doesn't it? Watch this. Cheers. All good. Okay, oh Kiryu God. has sobered. Uh Xiao, you're finally acting and moving again. Um, but how many people can you heal up? You can. Oh yeah, you can heal everyone. That's worthwhile. Everyone gets mildly drunk. Have anything I can? I don't have any big throwables right now. I feel so heavy. Um Yeah, we can sadistic heal. Okay, we've got we've got him down to like half health. Can we pull this off on the first attempt? Who the hell knows? No begging for mercy now. Uh, if that's actually pretty good, I can probably essence searing you at least once. Sorry to drag my feet. Oh, I should have checked if everyone had their best gear on before I did this fight, but oh well. Now's when he's gonna start doing big beams again in me. Yeah, he's doing his horrible beams. This will be tough. Ooh, Skatefish from the Whitethorn Showcase is out. Cool. Uh, you know what else is out soon from last year's Accessibility Summer Showcase? Let me check what date it's out. Uh, there's going to be a release date for it somewhere. Um, Bottom the Amount is out soon. Uh, 9th of April, so that's Tuesday next week. Botany Man is out real soon. Um, I may be playing it for review at the moment. I can't tell you what I think of it, but I believe it's coming out in just over a week, and I'm reviewing it, so make it that way, you will. <laughs> it is probably going to be... It's, it's probably going to be uh, an accessibility episode coming up soon. Much better. I feel so heavy. Okay, Sony, what can you do to be helpful right now? 
Uh, he'll carry you and give him MP to work with. There's no way to fight. Yeah, fuck it, let's. This is pretty good damage to be doing to this man. I trap him in a corner. Ooh, you know what else is out? Uh, what's it called? Pepper Grinder? We played it on stream briefly, uh, the demo. Switch game, you have a little drill in front of you, blue haired character, uh, side scrolling kind of Celesti, but you have a drill. That's out now, I've been playing that. Yes, Pepper Grinder. I've been, I was playing some of that today. I am pretty into it. Uh, it's pretty neat. I, I need to I need to get some more time in with it, but so far I'm a big fan of what I've played. Uh, I'm hearing it's a cool game that seems to be real short. I can't speak on that. I played like an hour and a half of it. Um, I I don't I don't know when it when it ends, but I've very much enjoyed what I've played of it thus far. I, I read nothing about it. I'd enjoyed the demo, so I didn't bother reading anything. I just picked it up, and I'm having fun. Probably next week I'll be able to talk about Pepper Grinder more than I've started playing it. It's good. It feels like the demo. It's that. That's good. Oh, I, all my people can get paralyzed. This is making it really difficult for me to win this fight. Uh... Have some tasty dim sum. Unkataku, Pepper Grind is a wonderfully short platformer missing its aha moment. Wonderfully short sounds like the fact it's short isn't a uh, complaint they have about it, which, you know, I'm up for a game that, like, is short and that feels like a good thing. I like it when it feels when when a game is short and that's a good thing. Oh, it's just me and Namba, isn't it? Okay, me and Namba can probably do this. If Namba can get un status, he can he can be on healing duty and Kiryu can be our damage dealer. Okay. Now we're talking. Namba can probably afford to do the, uh, this. Short but sweet slice of life propulsive platform thing. It's all driller and no filler. Cool. Sounds like it, it doesn't overstay its welcome, that that kind of short game. Cool. Good. Good to hear. Honestly, I am excited to hear it's, that it's not going to take me forever to get through. That's, that's a positive. Um... So yeah, let's get Namba healed and MP'd up. This is the worst. Essence of Searing. Structo Beam. Uh, I should be resistant to status affecting. Okiria should be fine to attack, probably. Back attacks in. There we go. We're going to complete this dungeon on the first try. We're great at video games. I won't do that. Moving up in the world. <laughs> oh, Thimba, which 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 senator is this? I to be so that I I. I'm sure a few of them have rallied against video games in their time. Um, the gummy duel won't tolerate betrayal. Uh, I just wanted to be popular. Wait. Hmm? Uh, Sayako's surprised that Sioni is going to kill him. I mean, sure, he's a jerk for betraying sure. you all, but isn't that a little cruel? Okay, he clearly made some mistakes. You can't deny he's got ambition. Lecture him to no end, fine. Maybe give him a chance. 
Okay, you're gonna... Any other day, we'd kill him on the spot, but... I'll let it slide this time. <laughs> Don't let someone who tries to overcome your organization just keep hanging out. Unless you can kind of dom him, in which case, like, he probably won't do it again. Joe, Lee, uh, Joe Lieberman, the guy who wanted Night Trap Band. Oh, that guy's dead. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, there we go. We, we've done... We've done the dungeon, and now we are... What levels are we? We're basically ready to do the end... To, like, complete this... We're high enough levels, basically, to finish Kiryu's half of this game. Um... I'm I'm gonna finish up here. Thank you everyone for watching. I hope you don't mind that last couple of streams when I've been a little unwell have just been let's go grind the combat dungeon. Uh, we'll get back to plot and stuff next week. Uh, we're, we're, we're really getting near the end of this game now. Thank you so much everyone for watching. Uh, I'll be back on uh, Monday next week. Uh, in, enjoy. Have a good one. I'm gonna go get some